Hey guys, time for a little bit of guitar this morning. We're going to be covering White Room by Cream, featuring Eric Clapton. This is the paper that's going to get you through this and get you in a spot where you can see everything. Okay, that is all of it. Pause the video. Please make a copy of this. Uh, let me get you on a cleaner camera that might help. All right, you should be able to get a copy of that. Welcome back. So uh, we're going to jump right straight into the verse. Um, there's a reason why. Um, the intro is in an odd time signature. Uh, if you notice on your paper, I have circled there the big uh, five and the big four. That's five four time, meaning that there's five counts in every bar um, being counted at the speed of quarter notes. We'll cover that in your private instruction. So with that, we're going to jump right straight into the verse. Um, we're going to be looking at... Uh, the D5, and there's a couple different ways, a couple different ways that you can play D5. The way he does it is, it's as if you set up a normal D chord. So, if you prepare yourself for doing that, um, but he doesn't use any finger at all on the high E string. He's going to need this finger later for other things. So that just leaves you, uh, your pointer finger and your ring finger, pointer second fret of the G string ring finger, third fret of the B string. And uh, we don't actually play the high E string through this whole thing. Um, so the trick that I use is I don't want to, I don't want to hear the high E. So I kind of angle my fingers and flatten them out a little bit just so that my ring finger here, uh, which is on third fret of the B, but it's currently letting me play the E if my pick accidentally hits it. So what I can do is just kind of angle it down and it mutes. So I can hear the third fret of the B, but if I play the E string, I can get that to mute. So that way I can kind of have four uh, strings that I can strum through, and you won't hear the high E. If I go back to a normal position, you can hear that high E coming through, and I don't want that. So you can kind of relax your hand a little bit, and it's just that, and the high E is being muted there. So uh, that's D5. Next chord on the list um, is C9. Now to do this, uh, just go ahead and release your grip that you have here on 2nd fret G. You don't need that finger anymore. You're going to keep uh, the same setup on the B string. Holding 3rd fret, muting high E. And you want to bring over uh, your middle finger to catch 3rd fret on the A string. And likewise, this is not like perfectly down. It's it's a lazy hold. Uh, what I'm trying to do is make it so I can hear this um, third fret of the A string. But I'm sort of muting the D string. Should I uh, accidentally pick that, I don't want to hear it. I did want to hear the open D string during the D5 chord. But when I get to this, I don't... There's my third fret of A. I don't want to hear that uh, D string at all, but I do want to hear the G string, which is now open because I've removed my second fret finger and third fret on the B. And if I accidentally hit I -E, high E, it's muted as well. So this is going to be um, third fret of the A string. I'm skipping over the D string completely and then G string, B string. Now, if I put that together, I have my D5, and that was uh, the D string, the G string, and the B string, D5. Move this, bring my third fret over on the A string. That's C9. All right, the next chord is going to be uh, the G chord, and I have th currently third fret on uh, the A string. My pointer finger's free. It's going to take over 2nd fret on uh, the A string. 
and likewise, it's still muting the D string next to it. It's just kind of a, a very lazy grip on, on all of this because you don't want extra open strings to ring through. And I will pluck the A string. I will skip the D string completely with my pick and pick up G string and B string. So that's... So, so far you have this. This is D5. C9. G. And the reason that we uh, <clears throat> we call this chord G, even though it's kind of a, a kind of a simplified version, watch what happens if I do put my third fret on the E string and I do put my pinky on the E string. There's a G. It's uh, later in the song he actually does play it as a full G chord, and you can do that, but he's only concerned with um, having the root note be this. Um, the second fret of the A string here, uh, which is a B. He doesn't want the G under it, uh, and there's a reason why that is. It's it, it. He wants it to flow out of the C into the B. He wants them nice and close together. So now you have this. One more time. And if I'm muting properly, I can kind of get like a strum uh, to happen with this, like. And that only works if I'm muting, like I said, like if I'm just letting the, the, the D string ring through on these chords, it's gonna compete with my C bass and go. And, and I don't want that, so lazily held to get that moving there. And the final two chords that you have are going to be B flat and C. And he does play these as power chord f forms. The, uh, the B flat first fret of the A string, do not hit the E string during this. First fret of the A string, third fret on the D string, only pick those two strings, A string and D string, and those two notes give you that sort of clapped any power chord kind of sound. Move that up to third fret. This is the C uh, that's in your tab marked as C. Same two strings, third fret, fifth fret. Now, this is a quicker move than what we've been doing on the other chords. You've had a four count for the D, like one, two, three, four, C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, one, two, one, two. Two counts on the B flat, two counts on the C, and then it starts again. So we're gonna try the whole riff in slow motion and we're gonna go with the recording here in just a moment. Do do well, hello. All right. Do, do, do. One, two. Four, E five, C, G, E flat, C, repeat, D, C, G, Okay, now he does have, he changes it up a little bit, but he, he can kind of uh, play individual notes while he's doing this. When I'm on D5, the active strings are uh, the open D string here, plus the G string, plus the B string. So my pick is going to cover the D string, the G string, and the B string. D, G, and B, all right next to each other, giving me three hits. When he switches over to C9, the D string is no longer in play, so I have to watch with my pick to hit the A string, but skip the D string, and then play the G string and the B string, and that's this. Same exact thing when I get to the G chord. I still want the A string, I still want the G string, and I still want the B string. I do not want the D. And one of the nice things is if you have the D string muted, 
if your pick accidentally does hit it, and it will, uh, it won't screw with the chord. And then B flat and C. All right, so we're going to try that um, as going like... bit cleaner on the second pass. Here it comes with a count. One, two, three, four. Now, uh, there is one other way uh, that you can do this, um, and it is not, uh, it's not tabbed on your paper, but I want you to check this out. We've been doing the D5 here, the C9 here, and uh, the G here. You have another option up at fifth fret. I could play D5 as a power chord here. So I'm playing fifth fret on A. 7th fret on D. And remember, my B flat and my C at the end of the phrase were 1st fret and 3rd fret, meaning that all I'd really have to do at the end of the phrase is come up to 5th fret, and that's I'm in a decent position to start this again. So if I have D5 here, and I'm kind of cheating a little bit, this is not a C9, but I can use a standard C 3rd fret power chord. Um, and then to get that G... Rather than playing, you know, G or anything else that he's got, if, if, I'm, if I'm playing the C power chord, I can take my pointer finger and just drop it to 2nd fret. Now, this is a bit of a stretch here. It was a C power chord, 3 and 5. Notice I'm using my pinky up here rather than my standard ring finger. That's to give my hand the ability to switch down to 2nd fret. Then... Uh, at the end of the phrase, B flat and C. So if I put that all together, and I just use my pinky the whole time because, you know, why switch it up in the middle if I can avoid it? So if I go D5, C5, drop the bass, and then here's my B flat and my C. And I'm still using pinky for this. I actually prefer this form if you're going to be like more wooka chooka with your pick. Check this out. Or wait a moment and then check this out. guys can work through that uh we're also going to have the uh the backing version of the song up on youtube for you and um enjoy playing this it's a very very cool riff a very cool song <laughs> 